Hey everybody, it's Edgewood. And Ruiner. And this is Season 2, Episode 12, Family Appreciation Day. I love this episode mm. so much. I love that Apple Bloom wears like the, the little head. Yeah. <laughs> the little head thing. It's all about Apple Bloom. I love Apple Bloom. Skulu's... I don't know. It's hard to say if I like Skulu or Apple Bloom more. Hmm. You're, well, you, you would obviously be wrong in both accounts since uh, Sweetie Belle is the best. Scootaloo and Apple You must merge them together. Scootaloom. Scootaloom. <laughs> Scootaloom. Oh, Scootaloom. <laughs> yeah, Scootaloom. Or, uh, Appaloo. Appaloo. <laughs> Wait. Crazy idea here. Okay. All three. Apple. Sweetie uh, Appaloo. Sweetie Appaloo. Yes. Yeah, or... With, with Sweetie being it for the first, so... Or... Scooter Apple Bell. <laughs> <laughs> so, it must have been a lot of trial and error to get these things right. Yeah. Did they explain how often they come? Um... The no, they, I don't think they actually do. They, they just look for the signs. I guess. So uh, this could mean that the tap apples could happen every couple of months or once a year. We don't know. But, <clears throat> you know, obviously Granny Smith is the expert, but I'm more than willing to bet she's passed on what to look for to Big Mac and Applejack. And I suppose it would make sense. To tap. I honestly thought that with this episode that um, Apple was going to get her cutie mark. You think? You did? Yeah, because she seemed to have a knack for making a sap apple jelly. Nah. What an amazing broom. It is. I mean, that's top of the line right there, bro. You don't... They don't make them like that anymore. Hell no. That leaf. It, it just doubles its cleaning potential. Yes. A skill level like you haven't seen before. Hmm. He looks like such a badass there, didn't he? Wait, what? Uh, Big Mac looks such a badass there, didn't he? He, he would if he didn't sniff <laughs> like that. These are really funky trees. Right on, no, right on schedule. Well, you see, I'm guessing with the signs. Right yeah, with schedule. the with the signs, I'm saying like uh, we don't know when they when how often this happens, but once the process starts, I'm pretty sure they got that timed out. But obviously, they, like I'm saying, uh, they, they, it was the uh, the process to make the zap apple jelly was mastered in one generation because uh, Granny Smith's the one who who found them and and uh, learned how to do it. One generation doesn't sound that long, but it really is. Well, she's probably got like I said, like all this is so random. I really the who would have thought to put on. A bunny suit and hop over the wa the water buckets while singing to the water. While singing to the water, and it's That's probably got to so be a random. And it's got. I bet you it's probably a specific song they have to sing too. Well, it's just A B C D E F G. It's just well, the alphabet song. Well, what if it's what if you say something on that? What if you're like a exactly? You're, what if you're hopping over a song going? Like, the road is long. That, that's why I'm saying. That's why I'm saying it, it only took one generation for Granny. It only took Granny Smith to find out. All this ran completely random stuff. I'm willing to bet she did some research into magic because this is obviously a magical fruit. I guarantee you, she probably did some kind of research or something. Ninety. I'm, I'm willing to bet she's like in her nineties or something, and that's more than enough time for her to learn the art of this thing. Oh my god! I just realized it. What? Apple Bloom is a furry. <sighs> in her bunny, in her bunny fur suit. Yeah, I got nothing against furries. Neither do I. But I just realized that Apple Bloom is one. She is. Oh my god, she is. She dressed up as a pig during... You're right. Oh, sh shit, she's a furry. She's a furry. That's pretty cool. It is. Very the cool. Things, the, thing, the things you find out. I met a pretty cool furry when I was at Dragon Con. I wanted his costume. <laughs> yeah. it, was a, it was a wolf. Yeah. It had like... They're called digit grade legs. It basically looks like he's like a wolf walking on two legs. It looked like anyone's hard to tell it was dark. But what was really cool... Was that his eyes glowed? Yeah, it's pretty gross. What? That his eyes glowed? No. Well, that that's cool. But I, Apple Bloom grabbing Granny Smith's teeth. Yeah, that is gross. Yeah, but not. Um, I was just walking along with a. No, it wasn't Suki. It was with two other friends of mine. 
Um, I won't say their names. You guys know who you are. Thanks for the lift home and everything, and I'm looking forward to getting that cool shit you're going to make me. I don't know what it is you're going to make, but it's going to be so awesome for my birthday. But uh, we were walking along, and I bumped into this furry. I love furries. I think they're cool. If I could, I would be one, but I can't afford to make that shit, nor do I know how. But this dude, I bump into him, and the wire from my headphones gets snagged on his gear. And I'm like, I make him stop for a second on snag. He, he, he was very cool about it. And then I took a look at him like, Dude, your eyes are glowing. Those claws are like really long and sharp. This is badass. Can I get a picture? And he was like, No, yeah, sure, go ahead. <laughs> so I got a couple of pictures. That dude was fucking rocking that suit so hardcore. Wait, is that an apple in Granny Smith's pocket in your bag? Yeah, they're carrying, I'm, I'm hoping those are just for snacks that they brought along themselves, because why are they buying apples? Indeed, you know, that'd be kind of fucked up, if, you know, if Applejack allows Grady Smith to go to Applejack stand and buy. <laughs> now, Apple Bloom, this is an extortion. This is contributing to the family. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I love I how uh, Apple Bloom had a lollipop in her bag in yeah. her saddle. I'm, uh... Thank you, Mr. Filthy. I got a question here. You know, have you ever had moments where you've been kind of ashamed of your grandparents or your mom or your dad or anything? Yes. Oh, sorry. Um, but anyway, would you like to share that or no? No. Nope. Fair enough, same here. <laughs> but uh, I think we all have those moments where we're kind of embarrassed of our family. But in the end, you know, our family's pretty cool. Considering the fact she won't die, our brothers. Not really. No. Not at all. Who was it that said that? What? That we're brothers? Yeah. That thought that we were brothers. Oh, that lady at the at the Publix. Oh yeah. Yeah, like works. we were. Um, last week we were hanging out. We didn't do any recordings last week, but we were just getting some stuff just to eat at the house or my apartment or whatever. The lady behind the register, you know, I'm paying for one thing, Rudo's paying for the other, and she goes, is this your bigger brother? Or some shit like that? So, so, so like that. Is this your brother? I'm like, what? No, no, he's not my brother. It's just a friend. Yeah. I am? Oh, you, you look alike. Yeah, I, mean, I asked my mom, too, and she said that we could pass for brothers. And I was like, I don't know. Uh, that's what I said, too. Appearance may be just a little. Personality, not even close. Oh, that's adorable. They're flying in a heart for, in a heart formation. They are? So, I never noticed that. Kinda sort of. Don't aren't those crows though? I think don't, so. Don't they normally symbolize death? So there's a bunch of crows that symbolize a mur a death. Murder of crows. Yeah, there's a murder of crows with you know, symbolizing death spiraling around Grady Smith. <laughs> <laughs> that's fucking Dark. Either that or the zap apples, and they're probably not safe to be eaten. Or um, maybe they're not safe to be eaten unless you make them in the jam. Was was the very top part of the of the clubhouse there before with the telescope sticking out of the window? I don't know. I have to. I don't check think that. I ever saw that. Maybe they've been adding stuff. You know, maybe they stole that telescope from Spike for his birthday. <laughs> maybe he just didn't want to give it to. Who knows? But yeah, maybe they probably just been adding stuff. I actually kind of like how uh, Diamond Tiara's father, you know, I like his personality, actually. It's nice to know he's not a horrible, rotten bastard like his daughter. I, where Scootaloo was just standing, I wonder if that's the same spot where where they, they show bad seeds about the whole, whole, like, this is where we stand to, to come up with ideas. Maybe it is. Because she jumped up and there was a lantern right over her head. She hits it and it lights up. Nice. <laughs> but, you know, like I was saying, I like to, you know, uh, it's Filthy Rich, right? Yeah. Yeah, I, I like how he's not, a, you know, he's not a bad per a bad pony. Like, maybe he, maybe, I wonder if he, like, was that he grew up, or maybe that material is just getting this horrible personality of hers from her mother or some shit. Maybe. I would like to know, really, like, you know. I'm pretty sure squishing grapes, green grapes, doesn't, turn, doesn't make, it like, a green... Paste. No, I don't think it does. I'm pretty sure they're kind of a more clear green. Yeah. And then, so, like, that that made no sense to me. But then again, we don't... Then again, this is the plate of a child. They aren't always that well thought out. Oh, no, I was saying this is a this is a world of magical talking horses. 
Well, that too. But once again, the plan of a child is never well thought out. Wow. I'm stupid. They're using the observatory right now. Their little observatory. That is awesome. So, so it's amazing that I didn't notice it before. I guess I just wasn't paying attention. It's not something we really have to draw our eye to. <laughs> those, those zap apples look so delicious right now. Yeah. All gray and stuff. I'm guessing some of the stuff she found out just... Trial and error. Well, yeah, well, most of it, I think, was trial and error. That's usually how it goes with stuff like this. Like, any skill I could think of, like, uh, forging mm. swords. Like, the first swords were more like daggers, and they were just made of stone. And then from there, you had bronze and all that stuff. But this is, like, nature stuff. This, this, this isn't, like, forging a sword or something where... Well, you just you just do different things to find out what works best. This well, is, this that's is actually nature. what you're doing here. They're doing different things with these apples to find out what works best. Oh, I guess yeah. <laughs> and man, their tails can take a hell of a lot of abuse. Yep. And they also seem to have a very high tolerance for pain. Ah, Julie, I like her. Is her cutie mark different right there? Right there at that angle, it looked like her cutie mark was different. It kind of does. Oh my, I, if you look at uh, in the Equestria Games episode, if you look at uh, Blue Blood's cutie mark, it's different. Yeah. I can't remember what it is, I just know it's different. I think it was... Mm. I think it was another reviewer, uh, Silver Quill, who's a Griffin, uh, he pointed it out. Yeah. Cinema. I love how he pointed out, says, We haven't seen much of Prince Blood since he had that cutie mark operation. <laughs> I love this bit. I love how this... <laughs> oh, they're just using her. You're like a freaking marionette here. Oh, no. Brown cow. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I love that show so much. And they do have a dog. They do. There's the cowardly dog. If I ever get a dog, I'll name it. If it's a, if it's a male dog, I'll name it Courage. If it's a female dog, I think I'll name it Suki. How'd they get the ropes out here? I don't know. How'd they get them to work out here? <laughs> they were wrapped around the stairs and like the, all the support beams on top from, from the roof. Because reasons. Because magic. Yes. Like because said, ma that's going to be the reasons for everything. Indeed. Magic talking for me. <laughs> so if I ever get a dog, I'll name it Courage. Unless it's a female dog, then I'll name it Suki. No one's ever named their dog Suki. Nope. No one. No one ever. Speaking of Suki, how's she doing? She is fine. She needs to clip her nails, though. Uh, is it hard to clip a husky's nails? They don't seem like a kind of animal that would sit still for that. She does not. <laughs> oh, Jesus. And, and she's chewing on them, so yes, I do. I definitely do need to, to clip them. Oh, dear. They change shapes, too, when, they, when they're ripe. Weird. So, and not the nails, and not Suki's nails, you mean? <laughs> or do you mean Suki's nails? You I love that outfit she's wearing. That's good loot. Yeah. You think they would uh make Apple Bloom stay home to help with harvest? I guess she's just too young. Oh. It's so sad. I'm gonna cry. Nah, really. These three are so. These three are like Ed, Ed and Eddie. They are. I always, always thinking of some kind of plan. I I love that show, by the way. Ed, Ed and Eddie. Hell yeah, that was a good show. I remember all the hype for that show before it came out. Yeah. And it lived up to the hype, too. Not like cartoons today. Very few cartoons really hold up to what they're promised to be. MLP is definitely a cartoon that not only holds up, but exceeds expectations. And I think it was one of the few that uh, cartoons on Cartoon Network that actually like had a definite ending. Ed and Eddie? Yeah. Yeah, I can see that. Uh, 
Uh, I think it was a movie, though. Like, they made it a little short movie. Yeah. The, we meet Eddie's brother or whatever? Yeah, they, you meet Eddie's brother, and, and like, some stuff happens along the way, and, like, like I don't I don't think many other Cartoon Network, uh... Powerpuff Girls kind of left a little open-ended. Yeah. Same with Dexter's Lab. Johnny Bravo 2. I wish they would have finished Samurai Jack. I do, too. It was... That's definitely one of the big mistakes uh, Cartoon Network made. That and not giving up Big O and a third season. But that's more Adult Swim than Cartoon Network. Yeah. But do you know why Big O didn't get a third season? Why? Well, basically, you know about shows like 12 Outs Mouse and Squid Billies and whatnot? Mm -hmm. Well, the guy who, who was in charge of producing those shows, mm -hmm. he wanted the funding that was supposed to go to making Big O Season 3. Oh. He wasn't going to get it, and he was threatening to pull all his shows off the lineup and, you know, leave Adult Swim. So Adult Swim cannibalized the Big O Season 3 funding to keep that shit on the air. I didn't really like those shows. What, what was it? Squid, Squid, Squid Billies, 12 Ounce Mouse, that kind of shit. I didn't watch any of those. I know, nor did I. I watched Big O. I, I, didn't, I never watched Big O, but out of all of those, I would that's the one that I would have had. I would have watched if I had to watch one of them. Big O is awesome. It's like Batman with giant mechs. And if there's one thing I like, is giant mechs. And Batman. I really like a uh, this whole flashback sequence. You know. See, they put this right after Hearth Woman Eve. So, so like it's just it, completely like bullshits so which, everything. Which happened? Which, which is it? <laughs> uh, someone give me Lord Faust's number. I gotta call her up. <laughs> but, uh... Maybe they were planning to make something here and it just didn't work out. And maybe Celestia heard about it and was like, Hey, I remember the, the founders couldn't get anything to work there because of the Earthly Forest. Maybe these people can do it. Or these ponies. You notice how the, the wolves have changed in this show? Yeah. Originally, they looked like actual wolves. Then in season three, they turned to wooden timber wolves. Yeah. How fortunate that the one day, the one night she sneaks out of the house to go look for something to eat, and the zap apples were already ready. Yes. Pretty luck. Indeed. Let me pick them apples. You know, one thing they've mentioned a lot throughout the show, I mean, they don't obviously they don't mention it in this episode, but. Um, is Star Swirl the Bearded? You ever notice there's a lot of him in the show, even though we never see him? Yeah. I would like to see, like, him in the show somehow, like, a flashback or time travel or something. He's in the comics. He is? Yep. How is he in the comics? I, I don't know. I've just seen the picture of him in one of the comic panels. That's cool. I know, I know, I've heard in one comic, the main six go to a dimension where, uh, the Celestial Sisters are evil. Yeah. The, the whole good and evil reversed. Uh, and Sombra's thing. a good guy. Yeah, and uh, I think I think uh, Chrysalis is also a good guy. Yeah, really. That's... Yeah, and instead of looking like a like a like a fly or something, she looks like a butterfly. So <laughs> she's got butterfly wings. So that makes you wonder about Cadence up. and shining armor. Then yeah, they show them too. Are they evil? Yeah. Well, Cadence is evil and. Uh, is, and uh, Shining Armor seems to be like a sniveling coward. Lame. At least that's what I can gather from the cover. Crazy. See? Trial and error. Mm -hmm, that's... How did, how did you find this out? Like Failure is the... I will say this from my own personal life experience. Because apparently she, she says that if, if they screw up even one little thing... They, they, like, like that. That is completely random. The it whole, is. The whole, po they, they like polka dots. How did you come across this were information? The, were, were they, like, did she, like, move them into a room with bad polka dots in it? And they're like, hey, they're receptive to this. Exactly. You know, it's, it's kind of weird. <laughs> you know, that's really how a lot of towns are really founded. You know, if you, like, in the Old West and whatnot. Mm-hmm. Just come into your area with some resources. It starts out small, and then it just grows and grows around it. So, that's actually, um, for younger children, that's very educational, because that's really how a lot of towns are founded. Hey, David Tierra, check it out. You'd be nothing without them. <laughs> Wait, you still are nothing. Oh, that's right. Oh, yeah. 
It's a shame. It's a shame none of the Zap Apple Jam was ready. I'm sure she would have brought some in. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> I love Grady Smith. Suki's mom loves Grady Smith. Like, I got her to watch the show and she goes, Grady Smith is so great. <laughs> I know a lot of the ponies are named after uh, apples. Well, the, the apple bloom, but um, uh, apple bloom isn't. Applejack isn't. But she's got the name. Bab Seed isn't. But it, it seems like less important characters like Big Mac, Granny Smith, Brayburn, all the Golden Delicious. They're named after apples. What about Half Baked? Oh, yeah. Half Baked Apple. Uh. True uh, enough, you're right. The, the whole introduction to her family in the first episode. It was either a, a, an apple or apple food. So is there something out there called an apple bloom that you can eat? Maybe. And apple jack. I don't know where you can find apple jacks. And have you seen that thing about, I can't remember what it's called, but like they, they did something so that they like fused a bunch of different trees together to have, like that, that grows like 40 something different kinds of fruit from right. one tree really yeah this is a real thing yes that is fucking awesome I want them I want to get genetically altered apples that are like zap apple colored or just like random colors like blue and purple and shit yeah that'd be cool <laughs> this is a fun episode yes it was but that's all for tonight I think we're gonna wind it down here and have make some stuff later. So see you guys next time. Offend us, Iris. Goodbye.